welcome to the Old Time Radio Westerns. I'm your host, Andrew Rines, and let's get into this episode. This episode is going to be The Lone Ranger. Original air dates February 6, 1946, and the title is Big Brother. The cloud of dust and a hearty high silver, the Lone Ranger. companion Tonto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. I'm Silver! Let's go, big fellow! I'm Silver! Oh! For half an hour, the two tired horses had been dragging the battered, lopsided old wagon over the trail that bordered the line fence of the vast Haskins Ranch. A small, tired-looking man held the reins. Beside him on the seat were his thin wife and ten-year-old daughter. The pinched, hungry-looking faces of all three showed the hardships of the long journey from the east. Won't be much longer, Mary. End of our trips in sight. And the end of the dust and the hot sun and the poor food. Oh, David, just look how green and soft those fields look. Oh, Daddy, does Uncle Harry really own all that land? He sure does, Abby. David, are, are you sure it'll be all right for us to go to Harry? Sure it will. How long is it since you've heard from your brother? Oh, sakes alive, must be ten years or more. He may not even know us. <laughs> He'll darn soon get acquainted. I'll bet it'll do the old curmudgeon good to have some women folks around the house. What if Harry doesn't want us with him? You just wait a couple of minutes and you'll see that you've got nothing to be afraid of. Oh, look. An Indian. Oh. Where, Abby? Where's the Indian? There, on the porch of the house. See him? Just like in the picture book. Yeah, sure enough. Great day, Mary. Abby, look. The Indian's talking to Harry. That's my brother. See him at the door? That's Harry. Oh. Bigger than ever. Look at him. Six feet two of hard muscle. There's a man. Hey there, Harry! Ho, ho! Ho, ho, ho! He, he didn't answer you. He don't know us. That's a trouble. Come on, Mary. Step down. Here, Abby. Let me help you down. Come on. There you go. I got my land to stay up. Go on, that moose get Oh, listen to him. Is Uncle Harry angry? <laughs> That's him, all right. Same old Harry. 
Listen to him tell that redskin off. Come on, we'll unload later on. <laughs> that's the stuff, Harry. That's the ticket. That's a way to tell the redskin. What do you want here? Who are you? Mean to say you don't remember me, Harry? I'm David. You, you David? This is my wife, Mary. How do you do? I I wish David had, had written to let you know we were coming. This is Abigail, my daughter. Abby, this is your Uncle Harry. Daddy's told me an awful lot about you. Uh, yeah. I wouldn't have known you, David. I reckon I've aged a lot more than you have. What in the name of caution are you doing here? You had a store in Cooperville, didn't you? Well, the store went broke while I was sick with a fever. No jobs in the East, so I packed up and came here. Well, come inside. All three of you look ready to drop. I... I'll unload the wagon. Yeah, let a man take care of your horses. Look like they need it. Uh, Harry, I figured there'd be something I could do here. You, uh, you three had better get washed up. The dinner bell will ring in a few minutes. We'll talk afterwards. That he didn't do what you said. Yeah? He's standing over there near his horse. He didn't go away. Go on inside. I'll take care of him. You redskin! You were around here in two minutes, I'll turn the dogs on you. Hey, come on, Abby. Oh, wonderful room. Did you hear me? You're done all right, Harry. Your home is beautiful. Oh, Daddy, are we really going to live here? Um, you'll find wash water right over there through that door. Don't take too long. It's time to eat. I like my meals on time. Did you have enough to eat, Abigail? Jiminy, Uncle Harry. It was bigger than any meal we ever had, even counting Christmas. Abigail. Suppose you and your mother go into the other room so I can talk to your father. Hmm? Come, dear. I'll be with you in a little while, Mary. Yes, David. Harry, I don't want to impose on you. You're not going to. You're going back where you came from. What? Harry? I'll replace your horses with strong, fresh ones and give you everything you need. Oh, I don't want no charity. I came here to find a job and work. Well, look here, David. You don't know the first thing about farming a cattle. You don't ride a horse. You can't use an axe or plow. Can't even use a gun. But I can learn, same as you did. You came I here I was and... young when I came here. You should have stayed in the east where you belong. Well, ain't there some sort of book work I can do? You've got to keep records and things like that. No, I can't use you, David. Besides, I don't want my life cluttered up with women and kids around. I'm setting my ways and not changing them. Well, we can find somewhere else to live. We needn't live here with you. With all the room I've got here, it wouldn't do to make my own brother live someplace else. Frankly, I don't want you here. The West isn't for you. You go back where you came from, I'll give you some cash. If you have trouble getting a job, I'll see that you're taken care of. I don't want your charity. Well, that's what you'd be taking if I paid you to work here. You mean to say... There isn't anything I could do? I'd put the cards on the table, David. I'll be sensible about it. I'm not going back. Don't be a fool. We staked everything on starting new out here. We're going to do it. What can you do? I don't know, but I'll find something. I won't ask you for help. David, stay here for a couple of days and you'll feel differently. Here? Not on your life. I won't clutter up your life with my wife and daughter. You needn't worry about that. We'll get out right now. Now, hold on. Where do you think you're going? What's it to you? David. Thanks for the food. When I get some cash, I'll pay you for what we ate. You fool. Mary, Abigail, come on. David, what's the matter? We're leaving here right away. <laughs> Abby, asleep? Yes, Mary, the way you sit there not saying anything is worse than any scolding you could give me. Go ahead. Tell me we should have stayed east. Tell me I'm just a blame fool. No, David. Tell me you were right. That we should have written Harry before we came a couple of thousand miles. There's no use going into that now, David. You'd better stop at the next place that looks likely. We'll have to camp for the night. 
Won't be dark for a couple of hours. David, look. That man coming this way. That looks like the Indian we saw at Harry's ranch. The other man, the man with the Indian. He's masked. Oh, oh golly. Right up there. Whoa. 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 Oh, 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 we got nothing worth stealing. I'm not planning to rob you. Well, why'd you stop us? I heard about you, Dave. You know who I am? Yes. News travels fast in this country. A week ago, I heard that you were on the way to your brother's place. You did? Yes. And uh, Tonto was there when you arrived. I... I saw him. You'll need a place to stay for a few days, won't you? I'm not asking for charity. There's no charity out here, Dave. Every man has to help every other man. That's the way of life. I guess my brother never heard of it. There's a mission not far from here. You like the padre. Your wife and little girl can stay there until you locate. But I can't pay. Now, most people had nothing but an axe and gun and a will to succeed when they came here. Will you follow us to the mission? I reckon so. We got nothing to lose. Sure riles me to think of my wife and daughter living on charity when my brother has everything. Don't envy, Harry. I think he'd be happy to change places with you. <laughs> He's got everything in the world. Everything for the future? Hmm? Your brother's likely to be dead by tomorrow morning. Come on, follow me. Come on, Silver. Get him up, Scott. Come on. Get up. Get up there. <laughs> Light some more lamps, Charlie. And what lights a lot in the house tonight? You better, Mr. Bloss. Charlie, do. Who is it? Yes, me, Mr. Haskins. Steve Winters. Let him in, Charlie. Charlie, do. I've got guards posted all around the house, Mr. Haskins. If Jimson tries to sneak in, we'll nail him for sure. Good. I sure won't feel that we can relax until that buzzard's back in territorial where he belongs. Well, he served his time. He can't be sent back. Unless he shoots another man or steals more cattle. He'll do that soon enough. Poor cat's always been a crook. <sighs> yes, I know. I just hope it's not my murder that sends him back. If we can just catch him making a play for you. He'll try to get me, no doubt of that. Did that redskin tell you when Jimson got out of jail? I knew all about him before the Indian came here. Two weeks ago. Then he's had plenty of time to get here. Yep. Boss? Maybe Jimson's forgot all about that vow he made when he was convicted of stealing your cattle and shooting Bard Baker. Jimson? <laughs> he hasn't forgotten. Well, uh, what's going on out there? I'll see what it's all about. Maybe Jimson's come here. Hey, hey, quiet down out there. What's going on? What's all that confusion? Steve is sitting here with words. Steve, you know me, Pete Kessler. Let me in there, it's important. Who is it, Steve? Pete Kessler. You want to see him? Let him come in. Come on in, yeah, Pete. Now the rest of you boys go on back to your guard. Hey, Mr. Haskins, it's about your brother and his family. What about him? He's hurt bad. He sent me here to get you. He needs help. What happened? The horses got scared by a rattler or something and went hog wild. The wife and girl was in the back of the wagon, so they only got bounced around and bruised. But your brother... He was thrown from the seat and cracked his head. Where is he now? He's at a hunter's shack about five miles south of here. He sent me to get you. Kessler, this ain't a trick of some sort, is it? A trick? Well, you've always been willing to do anything for anyone that would pay you. Jensen didn't send you here to get the boss, did he? Jensen? Ain't he in the territorial prison? He was, but he's out now. Did he send you here? Gosh, no, Steve. Yeah, I think this is on the level, Steve. He wouldn't be likely to know about my brother unless he'd met him. I don't know about that. News travels fast around here. I'll go with you, kiss him. Boss, you're taking a chance. What if it is a trick? Better let me go along just in case. Nope. You're the only one around here that knows Jimson on sight. You've got to stick around in case he comes here. But you're taking a mighty big chance. After all, David is my brother. Get a horse ready, Steve. Kessler, you wait right here while I change my clothes. I'll be with you in a minute. The 
curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. Now to continue our story. Harry Haskins had no time for weaklings or failures, and his brother David was both. When David and his small family came from the east to seek help, they were turned away from the big Haskins ranch. That night, however, when word came that David had been seriously injured, Harry immediately ordered a horse made ready so he could go to his brother. As he rode through the night with Pete Kessler, Harry had time to think. He thought of Jimson, recently let out of prison, and Jimson's vow to kill him. He thought of Jimson's cunning, of several other things, and doubt crept into his mind. Rain up here. Go there. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Shack's right over there. We'll leave the horses here. I see you lighting the shake. Yeah. Better tie your horse to a tree. Where's my brother's wagon? Around back of the shack. Come on. You ready? Yeah. Yes, you told me that Dave's horses ran away. Yeah, that's how he got hurt. Fell off the wagon. Those horses didn't look as if they had spirit enough to run away. I reckon they got scared by a rattler or something. It'd be just like one of Jimson's tricks to send you with a trumped-up story that'd get me away from my men so he could gun me. Oh, Mr. Haskins, I wouldn't get mixed up in anything like that. You'd get mixed up in anything if there was money in it. Oh, now get you... Get this straight, Kessler. Yeah? Steve and the boys know you came for me. If this is a trap and anything happens to me, they'll get you. That's no trap. You'll see for yourself. Before I go inside, I'll look in the window. If Dave's not there, you'd better be ready to talk fast. I'll do the talking. Hit what? Hold it. Don't draw, Askins. Jimson. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Take his gun, Kessler. <laughs> Go ahead, Kessler. Take it, you coyote. You'll need a lot of guns for this double cross. <laughs> Give me that smoke, Paul. By the time your men know what's happened, me and Jimson will be in Mexico. You got any sneak guns hid under his shirt? No. And open the door. Go on in, Haskins. I got some special entertainment for you. Well, Haskins, the last time we looked at each other was in court, wasn't it? Yes. Guess I've lost some weight since then. A man loses a lot of things in the time I spend in jail. He's got a lot of time to think, too. That's what I've been doing. I've been thinking. I've been making plans for you. Go ahead and shoot. Get it over with, Jimson. Oh, no. Uh-uh. Nothing as quick and easy as that for you, Haskins. I'm going to make you sweat before you die. I can't make you sweat as long as I did. But I can make you spend a mighty unpleasant time. Keep him covered, Pete. Right. Look here, Haskins. You know what this is? Nine chin. Yeah. One end stapled to the side of this shack. This other end, Haskins, is for you. Now let's see how it fits. Hmm, not bad. Now just lock her in place. <coughs> Reckon that'll hold you. You know, Haskins, that iron band is what they use in prison to hold the toughest kind of prisoners. All right, Jimson. You got me chained to the shack? Now what? Now what? <laughs> Nothing. Now me and Pete are heading for the border. Ready, Pete? Yeah. Sooner we start, the better I'll like. Oh, uh, by the way, Haskins, you won't be here long. You see, I put a lot of blasting powder under the shack. On the way out, I'll light a fuse. Sooner or later, that fuse will touch the powder and then... Well, maybe that blast will disconnect you from that chain. 
Only you won't know whether it's done so or not. <laughs> Come on. Goodbye, Haskins. We'll leave the light for you. Scheme of double crossing, poor cat. Can't do anything with this chain. Serves me right. If I hadn't turned David away, they couldn't have tricked me like this. David. Mary, that was a mighty deep sigh. David, I... I guess it's because I'm so contented. This patio is the most peaceful spot in the world. The Padre sure gave us a different way of looking at things. Yes. I'd sure like to know who that mask man is. Whoever he is, David, when he came up to us, he must have been an answer to a prayer. Quiet. He's coming from the mission. Padre told me you were sitting out here. We're just speaking of how grateful we are to you. David, the Padre thinks he can locate a job for you in a town near here. A job? Sakes alive, if he could do that... Just a minute. A horse? Coming fast. Mighty fast. Sounds like Scout. Who? Toto's horse. It is Scout. There he comes. Look at him come through that gate. Great day. Something's happened. Oh, Scout, hold on, hold on, hold on. What is it, Toto? What do you say? Go near Haskins Ranch. Keep eye on Haskins. Anything happened to him? Him leave ranch. Someone come, tell him brother hurt bad. Me? That's right. But I ain't hurt at all. Oh, me come here, see if you hear. Where's Haskins now? Him go to Hunter Shack, south of ranch. With whom? Fellow named Pete Kessler. Pete Kessler? Who's he? Toto, I saw Pete Kessler yesterday. Jimson was buying drinks for him. Jimson? Is that the man who's gunning for Harry? Yes. I was just about to leave here. Silver's all ready to go. Me get him for you? No, you get started, Tonto. Head for that shack. I'll catch you. I'll get Silver. He's over there. Get him up, Scout. I'm going with you. You have no horse. I'm riding with you. You told me how that horse carried double. You throw me down. Steady there, boy. I'll tighten the cinch a bit. I've got to go with you. It's my brother. Hey, big fella. All right, then. Give me your hand. I'll help you up. I've got to help Harry. All set. Good. One Silver. Silver, the mightiest stallion of them all, dashed through the night like a streak of white flame. He overtook Tonto racing on the paint horse, and he charged ahead. The Lone Ranger knew the country near the mission, knew it well. He knew every hill and valley, every woods and stream. He knew just where the abandoned cabin of a hunter stood and guided Silver in a beeline. Come Silver! Oh, hold silver, hold my fellow. There's a light in there. Eddie, big fella. Here, take one of my guns. Oh, Scott, hold my hold. Cover me, Tonto. I'm going inside. Ah, I'm right with you. Right with you. Where's Harry? David, you too. Get out of here. Get away before you're killed. Where's Jimson? Heading for the border. There's a lot of powder under the floor. Going off any minute. Get away, I tell you. I've got to get you out. You can't. We'll find the fuse to the powder. You can't do it. It's hidden. It'll go off any second. Get away, you crazy fools. Dave, get out of here. You've got a wife. Help me try to pull this chain loose. Let me get hold. Now, pull. Yes. I can't but... Oh, leave me here. You can't do anything. I'm going to try some bullets on that staple. Move back as far as you can. There's no time. Get back. Did that do it? No. I have to try something else. There's nothing you can do. Dave, listen to me. You're my only relative. When I'm going, you get my ranch. You'll get everything. Now get out. I'm going to keep trying on this chain. No, no. It's both of us or neither. No. Help me pull. If we could just pull that hasp out. Wait, let me get these ropes for one of the links. Dave, take the other end of the ropes out the door. Hurry, man. Right. What do I do with him? Hello, hitch him to the end of my saddle. Uh, Never mind me. Get Dave away. Get him away so we can take over the ranch. I got that. Maybe we'll all leave here in a few seconds. Now stand back as far as the chain will let you. Be careful when the chain pulls free. The rope's tied to your pommel. It's all set for you. Here, take this knife. When the chain's off the wall, cut the rope so your brother won't be dragged on the ground. Right. All ready, Silver. Dave, we've only got a couple of seconds left. Save yourself. Leave the knife with me and get out. I'm sticking with you. Doesn't my ranch, my fortune mean anything to you? No. The horse is straining for all it's worth. Come on, Come on, pull. The planks are bending. Look at them. With the chains holding. If Tonto could only find the fuse. It's hidden. Come on, Come on, Something's got to go. Look at that wood. Ah. 
Uh, it's spinning. The staples are pulling loose. Come on, Pilder. What for me, This is it. Cut the rope. Hold it. Hold it out there. Come on, Harry. Now we got to travel. This way. Over back to the trees. Out of the way, fellow. Get your heart over his shoulder. I could avoid it. You came here to handle the bookwork on the ranch? You mean I've done all right this past week? You bet. You know, it's it's good to have you here. I hope Mary and Abby don't disturb you too much. <laughs> it's great to have a kid and a woman around the house. Look here, Harry. If it hadn't been for me, you'd never have gotten into that jam last week. It was my fault you nearly lost your life. Oh, shucks. I thought you'd been hurt, so I had to go to that shaggy. But why did you? Why? Why, well, you blame fool. You're my brother. What I don't savvy is why you didn't leave me there to get blown up. You'd have had this whole ranch for yourself. Why'd you save me? Why? <laughs> why, you blame fool, you're my brother. <laughs> is it a good joke? Uh, well, hello, Mary. Is Abby in bed? She's just saying her prayers. Come to the door. I want you to hear something. Be very quiet. Yeah. Padre, who was so good to us. And please bless Uncle Harry for the money he sent to the Padre. And God, please bless and protect the masked man who rescued Uncle Harry and captured the bad man before he could harm anyone else. Amen. She says that every night. You know, Mary, Abby's not the only one who remembers the Lone Ranger in their prayers. just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated. This has been a presentation of otrwesterns.com and we hope you enjoyed. Please take some time to like and rate our shows in your favorite podcast application. Follow us on Facebook by going to otrwesterns.com slash Facebook. Subscribe to our YouTube channel by going to otrwesterns.com slash YouTube. And send us an email, podcast at otrwesterns.com. You can call and leave us a voicemail, 707-986-8739. This episode is copyright under the attribution non-commercial share like copyright. For more information, go to otrwesterns.com slash copyright. Have a great day, and thanks for listening.